here, folks. Jonathan Wilson, Toga Man Guitar Vitals. So, I want to talk a bit about this instrument, the 10X, that is, right now they're trickling out, but hopefully we're getting things greased up here a bit. It's just been sewing up the uh, last processes and discoveries. <laughs> uh, it's been a long road getting here, um, but this is the instrument that I would myself play the rest of my life if I were to only have one instrument around at all. And of my body of work for the last 20 years, much of it has been hand-built wooden ones. This is still hand-built. It's just a different process of build. And it's strategic use of wood. Uh, for example, the top is, in this case, is bossy cedar. I also use maple and a few other ones. Um, and basically there's a balsa, flax and uh, a very, very thin veil of uh, carbon fiber to give it a little bit of that uh, coffee back to the sound. Anyway, um, it's uh, basically a one unihull, meaning that the body and the neck are out of the same. And this, there's a strategic structure on the inside. This thing is built to just outlast all of us basically. Uh, when my instruments leave, I never want to see them again. Um, the pro there is a problem with being the world's arpeggioni guitar viol builder of a certain type of instrument is that once there's hundreds and hundreds of them out of there, um, inevitably something's going to hit a shop and somebody's going to be scared of it and it winds up on my porch. The problem is, is that when an instrument shows up in such a state, it comes here to die or disappear for a while. Um, and it's one of those things that never really competes very well in the day of just getting these built. And there's a lot of people waiting on them. And that is something that I have to process every day that I wake up. So I'm constantly, just from when I get in here until I go to bed, um, th these are what's getting the next ones built or the biggest thing in the front seat of my mind. Um, hope all of you are well, by the way. Anyway, uh, so it's been a campaign of burning ships. And what I mean by that is, uh, you'll see, and this is the last of what would be the typical wooden models I've built for many years. Uh, this one's getting setting up and going to England. It is an art piece that made its appearance at a recent um, open house. And um, I did have to do a redo with the top. We had a little incident and so I had to, you know, acquire another uh, piece of spruce and give it another go. And I've been using spruce for a very long time. In fact, um, you know, the m tops have typically been that of bent and partially carved spruce and it's really, it's excellent stuff. Um, the downside is uh, when it comes to climates and relative humidity, these instruments are very fragile. And uh, as sweet as they sound, um, also we just don't want an instrument that we're halfway afraid to play. And I want to be able to bring the fun and exuberance into it as well. So, but these are pretty uh, well built. This one is, uh, does have the uh, Vial Glide fingerboard on it, which by itself is a major leap of technology. Uh, the arpeggioni historically uh, has been a failure instrument since the uh, 19th century and there was a lot of reasons behind it. Probably the softer uh, gut strings and the thing could not really compete with the louder, um, more nimble violin family in terms of you know, focus and tuning in um, certain frequency areas. Um, the other problem was that of the complex fingerboards and in the past I've had boards that look like this. At some point I went to CNC and we were embedding jewelry wire and that was problematic because it would essentially, you know, wear the strings out and also uh, there was limitations to how much we can bend fret wire. And then the problem was, yeah, the fret wire for would just basically chew expensive cello strings up. And so I had to, there had to be a better way. So regardless of tradition, regardless of material, all that stuff be damned, 
what would the ultimate playing surface be like? And this is what I've done. And this was the first step in the 10X build, which what I thought back in 2016 was, yeah, have these things uh, cranking out in 24 months. You know, I'll do this on the side, a little side hustle. Yeah, that uh, Mount Everest was a little taller than I thought it was. Um, and I went through a whole process of making tooling. Um, but along the way, there were some bureaucratic hassles that drove me to the present shop here, which is very awesome, by the way. And uh, those of you who are in town this weekend, uh, next weekend actually, um, not this coming, but it, Saturday the 21st, and uh, it's uh, going to be two to six, uh, sort of a pizza potluck, coffee BYOB, owner operators, or people who are just serious and curious. I'll be trying to do some live streams here as well um, when we get to that. I'm going to get back to this. So burning the ships. Um, you know, if, I'm pretty sure most of you have noticed that we're living in a very world, different world right now, um, <laughs> to say the least, right? Um, we hear things bandied about supply chains, this and that, and logistics. Well, I did see... Um, my network of colleagues and uh, things just sort of evaporated um, in some of their areas. So um, I had to really adapt to newer methods of making the instruments um, that did not rely on me buying a tree once a year and having it sliced up once a year and, you know, getting a year and a half worth of uh, tree at once and the fit, you know, the weight and forwards on that, you know, so it can be a wonky process and timing and just all this kind of stuff where it has to come in, get sliced out somewhere else, come back, get glued, get remilled again. So it's, it's a real, it was a real drag. The other thing is, is that just that, you know, wood itself is wonderful as it is and how we've used it for centuries. It's, there are some restrictions on it. We're starting to see a lot of other things going on, but um, I like to use it very strategically. And um, I'm doing that on modern builds that can actually take it, like I was just mentioning, um, on the other, um, the 10X model. This one here is the, I call this one the Sands of Time, and this one is, uh, like I said, it's getting set up this afternoon. We're, we've got a crate waiting for it. Um, I'm gonna give the crate just a quick plug because basically I make these animals to put inside of a cardboard box. And all this stuff. So the instrument gets cocooned in this crate within a box, within a bubble wrap around it. Because, you know, I don't leave it to chance. I want these things to arrive, you know, the way they're intended to arrive. And there's just no shortcuts with that, especially with how they get handled. So even in a crate, it's actually safer than a case, believe it or not, just because of its structure. Anyway, um, back to this. Um, so I've been taking all the last of you know, various stock I've had and, you know, using it in creative ways. So maybe if there was some little issue I didn't like, well, we would just, you know, do something dramatically different. And I just thought this was fun. This also glows in the dark. Um, also, there was a little, you know, blow from when it got milled and stuff like that. We just said, yeah, let's keep it. It's sort of like the crack on the Liberty Bell. And I like to have, celebrate the imperfections as well. And it makes it just unique and one of a kind. So, um, but you're gonna see far fewer of these things being built. Uh, and if I do, it's, it's a, a it'll have to be a ridiculously high premium. Um, I have a lot to build and custom things and little, little things, they can domino up and it gets really ugly. And right now I'm just having to get through an ancient stack of orders uh, that, um, are tied to this project, which, like I said, I'm just completely thrilled with this thing. It's a great machine. Um, it's also, you know, it, we have a really good pickup system in it. Right now it's a um, an LR Bags Lyric, and this one's wired for phantom power, but we can also do it with a battery inside. It's not a big deal. In the past, I didn't like putting batteries inside the instruments for a few reasons. Uh, one is just because we don't want more junk in the trunk. Uh, two, we don't like these hatch doors and all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, when the future comes and 
technology changes, you know. And that's the thing, I, I don't like these to be have built-in obsolescence, so we can easily take this system right out and not worry about wrecking the instrument in the process. It's a little more, you know, resilient. This has a built-in finish, it's infused with uh, the same resin that it was pressed with. And uh, so we have a very, very active top. And this is effectively a speaker. And I find that, you know, when we use, like do wooden instruments with highly resonant sides or whatever, you get a sort of an, you know, like an omnidirectional sound, but you don't have as much punch up front. These things punch out a lot more in the forward way. Um, but they're at the same time, they're very delicate. And I'll go through that in another V blog down the road. Um, I do love how this transition goes up. So basically the way this neck feels when you're playing up here and you can just get up in that area. Um, this is kind of just a one up from the, uh, what I've been doing for years on the twisted cutaways. And so you can generally get up here, but you still have that little guy there in the, in the whole thing. So um, with the uh, 10 X design, I've sort of, you know, taking that little speed bump out and we can just really get up there and, and get into it. I've also, in the last uh, few years, you might have noticed, I've went over to the, um, the snail box, or not the snail box, I went away from the snail box and went to the Stouffer. Stouffer was the guy who, a couple hundred years ago, invented the arpeggione. He was a famous guitar builder of the day. He also built violins. Um, he was, of course, harassed by various violin guilds and things like that. Uh, very innovative, very forward-thinking, way ahead of his time, died in the poorhouse, actually had a famous apprentice named C.F. Martin. You've heard of that guy, and he got chased out of Germany and Vienna back in those days uh, and founded his company in the uh, United States, so the rest is history. Uh, but anyway, so I've been honoring Stover, but I, I prefer also the longer bass string stretch, and it gives it sort of the harp shape of the string layout. And um, I... Just for the fun of it, I thought I'd bring back an old friend from a long time ago, just for a quick convo here, to see how far this has come in 20 years. This was my um, basically 2002 model that I had no shop. All these machines over here in the background that you don't see. This whole, all this kind of stuff, it didn't exist back then. It was just basically... I had a rusty bastard file, a block of alder, and a dream, and that was it. And I had no idea this thing was just going to, you know, define the next 20 some years and perhaps a few movie soundtracks along the way. So that's pretty cool. I'm overwhelmed by that. So uh, basically the uh, concept though that I wanted to go into also is that this is basically my universal design. And it, it comes all the way back from those days, from the 2002 days, but I like to be able to sit down with it, have it rest on the left leg. You can probably not see it on this particular shot, but the, you know, the nut is relative eye level. Um, this has just such an ease of transition in the playing in the upper register. And it just, it's very satisfying. And also, I mean, whether it's mic or plugged in. Now, I get asked a lot about well, what about your electrics, man? What happened to those? The old, you know, you have the old early snail box. I eventually started hollowing them out, and then about everybody in Africa and Europe started doing it, and I just said, oh, I got, I think I've done several hundred of them, so I kind of got tired of it. And there's a lot of production things I don't like about it either, so um, I'm really actually smiling now that I'm doing Stouffer's, so that's how it goes, man. So we're gonna make one model, what would it be like? It would be a greatest hits of all of those things. Um, but people do ask me about the solid body and there, I can go into a long lecture on this by itself uh, as far as how things go. It had individual pickups. Each one was getting the bowed horizontal uh, planar motion, uh, which is a, another complete topic. But when you're on a solid body instrument, you know, it's not, it doesn't have the same pumping action that a uh, you know a gingerbread man with a hinge shackle on one foot does with rocking the bass side that kind of thing. So it um, it's very you know like a rock basically you know and it's it's so you have to have special pickups and that's what I've been using for the last twenty years are ones that were 
I had sort of redesigned and re-engineered and GraphTech had uh, made them for me and I guess the molds have given up the ghost after 20 years now. So um, I'm rethinking it and what I'm looking at doing is, I don't know if you can see this, this is a, a flax hull that I'm actually um, going to be building a prototype of the solid body out of, but it's going to be out of the same exact pattern. So it'll be patterned like this. The only difference is it'll be full of foam. It's going to have a little sort of conduits inside for running the electronics into, and um, it'll have the electric bridge, of course. And so it'll have the weight to it. And the advantage of that is this is kind of a piece of foam that I just use as a mannequin. It's sort of, we lay cloth on it and cut the cloth and, you know, estimate the, the cuts when we're making the uh, molded pieces. But it also, it gave me that sort of aha moment because one of the problems that we have with the acoustic when we're playing it standing up with a strap is it's so light and it just wants to go all over the place. And especially the other problem is, is that with the solid body electrics, you know, we would basically, these were great because they had some weight to them when you wanted to stand up and do this kind of Jimmy Page kind of playing, kind of whatever you want to call it. Um, I want to kind of just aim that down a little bit. But you can see that for, for what we're doing, it's very close to the body and it's kind of uncomfortable. You kind of scrunch your arms in to play it. But if, you, if the thing was out here, you would pro, it would be like, oh yeah, that's comfortable, I can do that. Well, there's only two ways to really do that. Or you can either put a big pillow, or maybe you're just portly, I don't know, but a big pillow out there, you know, um, or put it on a stand. And that was two things I didn't want to have to do anymore. And that's why I designed this thing to sit down, essentially, back in the day. And we, you know, this would be like the left leg and the right leg just kind of holding it in place. Eventually, when the acoustics started coming around in a, in a similar pattern, um, wound up putting what was called a leg peg on here to wrap the right leg around to kind of anchor because it, it didn't have the same weight. And so because it's a light instrument, you know, it'd move around quite a lot. So to solve that, uh, we're gonna take the same pattern because the acoustic, as it turns out, and I could get a better one just from one that's set up, is if it is kind of weighted down a bit, suddenly we have a more comfortable, without the pillow, you know, way of, way of playing. Um, but with a strap, it's, you know, gonna go all over the place. So there's all these little issues. We don't wanna stick pillows in there either. So um, to make the solid body, and of course it has a very, very distinct mid-heavy sound that you've probably heard and you have heard in a lot of movies. Um, the most famous day, well, I mean, there's a few movies before, but uh, 300 uh, came out and that was like done a lot with Tyler Bates' work with that and the looper. Ironically, I was a looper back in the 90s in early two Y2Ks and that was kind of why I wanted to do that because I wanted to have a solid body where I could play Trick the Sound Man, where I could give them half gain and get a nice mix in my monitor because if they were stingy, I was in trouble, you know, getting a playback. So there's actually a little story behind all these little things here. So um, anyway, we're burning the ships through the sands of time. And we're on to the next generation. Anyway, I thank you for hanging in there. I know this is kind of a little longer of a video, but I really wanted to give you guys a nice little breakdown of what's, what's happening and uh, what the present is. So basically right now, like I said, it's, it's been just getting the last bottlenecks out of you know the body finish out of the molds. Um, it turns out it's not the easiest thing in the world and things like in mold finishes for some of you who geek out on that kind of stuff is like a gel coat but the problem is that stuff is like a tone condom and we still want these things to sound good so we don't want to put too much of a tone condom on them so it's very deliberate very delicate uh, you know but robust and tough instruments so it's very light and weight some of the frames and stuff that go inside here are made out of something that's actually lighter than water, but 
super duper ridiculously strong uh, free form air kind of stuff. And anyway, there's a whole breakdown of how, how that's all, it's taken months to really engineer it. I had to go through a lot of things that just, they weren't gonna work, they weren't gonna be as repeatable. And that's the problem is that when you have stuff that has too many layers of process, but you wanna to get to this very end, then you know you do what you have to do to get there. Anybody who's been hanging in there for forever on my instruments, thank you so much. You guys made this thing happen. Um, obviously, getting them to you right now is, is front and center. I do have to move ballast around a lot more. I work alone since last summer, uh, mostly. I do have a little protege who's coming in here, um, and but that's always a uh, sort of a slow process getting things up to speed with that. You know, the training curve is pretty pretty demanding and pretty high. Um, and I'm proud to say I've had a few people start their careers in, in the shop over the years. So um, I'm all about, you know, passing it on as well. Uh, however, the reality is that, you know, in the last few years I've been in this shop during a pandemic, no less, uh, right after a blow up in the last uh, shop at Fillmore, which caused me to move out here, which caused the overhead to be more than double, two and a half X, and uh, closer to home though, so that's the plus, and it's a nice, way nicer shop. And so we're gonna make, very, we're making great use out of the shop, uh, sort of getting even for the last couple of years of just, you know, the isolation part of it. So that's why, again, uh, this, I know, I don't know when you're watching this video, you might be a long time from now, but we are doing these meetups and I am having one on Saturday, May the 21st, 2022, owner operators and friends and that kind of thing. So I'm trying to make the best use of this space, uh, perhaps on weekends. Sometimes we'll do an open house. Uh, I did one recently and that was, that was fun. So anyway, um, but the uh, Monday through Friday part of it where I'm pretty much just grinding away some random Saturdays. Uh, other times I'm just, I, you know, hey, what can I say? I'm, you know, aging man here. And uh, I do have to rest on a weekend a little bit here and there and try to get away for a bit. So I might be blogging on some of that stuff too, uh, the California coastal adventures and that kind of stuff. But generally my Sundays, when I'm just sort of relaxing, it's sort of, rather than read the bad news all, all day, I'll, I'll you know type away one of my uh, blog letters. So check out my Substack, uh, Jonathan Eric Wilson. And again, I'm gonna vary the topics out a little bit. There's gonna be things, a lot of this, a lot of the music, a lot of the action, a lot of the shop action, but also too, just some of the life part of it too, and uh, things we, we like. The food and wine trips and all that kind of fun stuff. So anyway, have an exceedingly awesome day, awesome week, stay inspired.